What's up everybody, That Car Guy Eddie here, and today another video. Today's video is gonna be on should you rent an RV via Outdoorsy? I've done it three times now, and I think I have some good experience on how to rent an RV, what you should look for, and kind of go from there. So, it's bright and early, it's Memorial Day, crack open your favorite energy drink. Ah. Cheers, and let's get the video going. <laughs> All right, well, as promised, here's a review of my outdoorsy RV toy hauler that I've rented. So first of all, let me go ahead and start by telling you what it is. <clears throat> so this is a 2012 Snell uh, Forest River uh, toy hauler. Uh, it's about 30 feet in length, and you have the toy hauler portion back here, and then you have your living area, uh, you have your cooking area, and then you have your bunk here or your rack or your bed, whatever the heck you want to call it. Now, in 2012, this was probably a pretty nice RV. In fact, it was probably pretty nice, but it was also probably sixty-five dollars to $75,000. Uh, nowadays, if the world wasn't absolutely crazy with uh, inflation and things along those lines, um, I, I mean, I think that this would probably be like a $10,000 trailer. Uh, with the world's craziness and inflation, it's probably a $25,000 trailer because you just can't find them. But what I want to do is uh, flip the camera around, show you a little bit more because from this view, you're probably like, man, that thing looks great. Um, let me get a little closer for you. All right, so let me go ahead and flip over to wide angle here and show you a little bit more about the stealth. So first thing I want to tell you is there are overspray on this thing. I don't know if you can see it, but there's overspray. And you can really tell by just looking around the lights. Look at all the extra caulking that's around these things. Uh, it did come with a weight distribution hitch, which is really great. Um, if you're going to be towing anything heavy, you definitely need a weight distribution hitch. So make sure that they do provide you with one of those. One thing that it had that wasn't hooked up was a sway control. Now, here's the thing. If you put something heavy in the far back of your trailer, your trailer is going to sway more. You need a sway controller. Well, this was in it. It was in the RV, but it wasn't hooked up. Why wasn't it hooked up? Well, let's talk about the first thing that I needed to buy. I needed to buy clips, cotter pins. Now, the problem is, I don't even know if this is right, um, but I got these at a local Napa and I made it work. Um, I don't even know, like I said, if it was right. Um, it's just kind of what I did to make it work because it was swaying incredibly bad. We walk around the RV, we look at some stuff and we just start to see that there's been a lot of uh, quote unquote repair done to the RV. Um, he told me not to use the awning because the awning is brand new and he didn't want it ripped. It's funny when he says the awning is brand new because you can see stitching in here and then it just goes to nothing. You see that? Which leads me to believe that it is not new. Plus, I don't believe anything this guy told me. Let's keep doing the little walk around about it. Let's look at the second part of the problem. Let's look at these tires. These tires are shot. This is on a rental RV. If you look, I mean, they are really, really, really bad. Um, this should have never been rented. When I ask him about it, he goes, he goes, oh yeah, um, no way are those tires that old. Uh, you know, they're 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 just they're just used tires. Well, yeah, they're used tires, but they got a zillion miles on them. Um, how do I know these things have a zillion miles on them? Well. One of the big deals, if you look over here, this actually went to King of the Hammers last year. So, um, you know, it went to King of the Hammers. So it drove from California to Utah um, and it did its thing. And it probably did it on these tires. Uh, tires should be replaced fairly often. Now, when I ask him, hey, what's up with the tires? He goes, oh yeah, they're due for a replacement. I just haven't replaced them yet. New tires are on the way, but I gave you two spares just in case. Well, wouldn't you know it, I had a blowout. Yes, that was incredibly fun to deal with, a blowout on your trailer. And if you come over here, you can see some of the damage that the blowout has actually done. Um, you can look right here and you can tell that this is the one that was replaced and this is the old tire. And I wanna show you the difference between good tire and a bad tire okay very big, good difference but you can see it did some damage here to the flashing uh, the tire whipped off and it did do a little bit of damage under here that's what happens when you have blowouts 
it makes more sense for a RV owner to replace these than it does to fix all of this, unless he's doing insurance claims on it um, and pocketing the money. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking every time this thing has something happen to it, this guy's just pocketing it. The problem with it is, you see this? It destroyed the fuel station fill. So this is the fuel station fill. It does have a fuel station on it, but when the tire blew up, it destroyed that. And when it destroyed that, it rendered that useless. So I couldn't even use it when I went out. So I had to stop and buy uh, gas cans at $35 a piece, which is a premium. You know, you continue to walk around the RV, you just see a lot more, like really, really bad caulking up here. It's just, it's just beat up. Um, you come over here to the business end of things and you see this Walter White patch job here. This is super quality. Evidently this happened from one of the last renters. Somebody may backed into the RV. <laughs> this doesn't look like anybody backed into the RV. You know what this was? There was a pole here. Some idiot did not have to drive the RV, turned and probably bent this in. Um, I almost want to take this off to see what the damage is underneath this thing. But like I said, it just makes the RV look super trashy. And then you got the ghetto wheel there. Um, oh my gosh. It's just, it was just a really bad experience. Um, and like I said, I don't know if it's to all outdoorsy stuff or if it's just this one. Um, but like I said, it was bad. These doors don't lock. Um, you know, the, the locks are broken on them. Um, if you look in here, it's just, like I said, it's just been, it's definitely been used. Now, when I rented it, he said, don't use a generator that's on it because the generator that's on it, the hour counter stopped working. So I'm going to give you this spare generator. Okay, cool. No problem. You do have to plug this in here. And I went to Sand Mountain. You know, I was in a sandy area. Um, it wasn't a huge pain in the butt, but it still sucks having to get out of your car to use the generator. Now, what I want to show you is I want to lay down on the ground over here. And ugh, I want to show you the water fill. Look at the repair job that his people have done to this water drain. It's all silicone and caulked and why? It's because it leaks fresh water. Yeah. Now, I thought that was bad, but if you look over there, let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit. Do you see that ratchet strap above the rear axle? That ratchet strap is actually holding the structural supports for the tanks. That is insanely dangerous. That is so dangerous. I can't believe that. Now, outdoorsy, they don't seem to really care too much because like I said, they don't really review any of their stuff. But at the end of the day, this trailer is dangerous. It is dangerous, you know? Uh, let's go ahead and go inside. See how the trailer looks inside. Here's our faithful steed here. The Ram 1500 Eco Diesel, <laughs> pulling 8,700 pounds, up a 6% grade. I was amazed by this truck. I really was. All right. So now that we go into the into the trailer here, uh, this broke day two. So this pulls out. I can't even get it to really. Oh, there we go. This pulls out. And if you look, there's a hinge here like pot metal see this right here that's supposed to be connected that broke um thank god no one fell but yeah so it rendered the stairs useless which sucked let's go ahead and go inside now in here it doesn't look half bad um, it just looks very used and that's one of the things that you run into when you buy a rented rv or you use a rented rv um you have, of course, your dual-din sink here. Uh, you have your water pump, your heater, your fuel station, and then how much fuel is in it. Another thing that was wrong with this, when I picked it up, it was empty, but it said that it had three-quarters tank of black water in it. Um, so the sensors in the black water and the gray water tank are all messed up, so you never know how much you have. Right now, it's empty. Uh, I emptied it myself, and it's saying that there is stuff in there. And there's clearly not. Uh, here is the toy hauler section. And here's that blown tire that you can see. There's the generator they gave me. And that's part of the fuel door that it ripped off. 
Um, one thing that I did like is I did like these beds. They came down on this track, which is really great. Um, like I said, there's two queens there. There's a full here. Um, and then you have the master in there. One thing I can tell you, these chairs are super comfortable. In fact, if I could find some of these on Craigslist and put them in my video game room, these things are great. Um, They're incredibly comfortable. These are almost worth the price of the RV right there. It does have a TV. Uh, guess what? Has a DVD player. Guess what didn't work? The DVD player. There are trim pieces coming off this thing all over the place. It is just an absolute nightmare. Uh, you come over here. Oh, here's the here's the hour meter that didn't work. Uh, so it had 427 hours on the generator when the generator stopped. That's not even that much um, when it stopped counting. The sink, um, another TV that didn't work. Uh, these mattresses, I just things like that should be replaced. You know, here's the the bathroom the toilet did work okay um but as you can tell the floor is like coming up here um it's just i mean there's cracks and everything everything's peeling the top has obviously been pretty wet uh your exhaust fan doesn't work i mean there's just a lot of problems with the old trailer um and what i'm afraid of is I'm afraid of them using my deposit to fix some of these issues with the trailer itself. You know, that's not something that I really want to deal with. So we're going to do a little recap and we'll talk more. Now, I will be doing a video on Sand Mountain and Adam's E85 Pro XP. I will be doing that. Um, that'll probably be coming today or tomorrow. I got a lot of stuff to do for work tomorrow. But like I said, I will be doing a little bit more. Uh, but go ahead and hang tight for that video. Definitely like and subscribe, you know, and if you, if you like the content, consider subscribing, uh, but definitely drop a like. And have you ever had any weird issues with an RV or anything you've rented, whether it be a car or anything like that? Because it seems like every single time I rent something, you're renting something that is just absolutely crap. Um, I think, like I said, rule of thumb is if you're going to double the age on RVs, and this is 2012, this is... 10 years old, but if you double that, it's basically a 20 year old RV. That's how you got to look at it. it. Has the same wear and tear that a 20 year old RV would have on it. And yeah, if you look at it like that, it's not in that bad of shape, but shouldn't be rented. This should be owned by somebody who can love it, who can fix it. I mean, the back door is soggy where we take the car in and out. Um, the floor has problems, um, but you get what you get. Now, I know what you're thinking. <clears throat> How did you get this epic camera st shot? No, I'm just kidding. I have a tripod. <laughs> but I know what you're thinking. So you've seen the RV, you've seen it go through, and you're like, man, I would never rent an RV via outdoorsy. And that's that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, renting an outdoor uh, recreational vehicle has been fun. It's been great, actually. The first year I did it, I, it, it heck, it's how I ended up with a Can-Am. So, um the first year we did it, we rented like a, it was a 2002 um, Class A and it had an aluminum trailer and it had a turbo Can Am Max, which is the slow one, the 120 horsepower one. And the family and I took it up to Sand Mountain and we had a great time. You know, we had good memories in that RV. The RV did relatively well. Um, nothing was broken on it. I mean, old stuff, like little things, but nothing was like majorly broken. Um, it towed the Can-Am incredibly well, uh, and I think the lightweight aluminum trailer really helped with that. The second time I rented, uh, I rented from a, a, a gentleman and I rented a Class C, uh, mainly because I needed more beds. At this point, uh, Adam, brother-in-law, was actually going with me, and we just needed uh, one more bed. You know, Adam is not a child. He's a full-size man, so we definitely need more space. And that Class C was, it wasn't bad. Uh, I believe it was like a 2013, 2014. One thing that you have to remember when you're renting RVs is that however many years old it is, double it, okay? The reason why is because RVs, travel trailers, toy haulers are not designed to be used long term. Therefore, the quality of products is typically crap. People use them once or twice a year. 
if they're in a rental fleet, they're gonna get rented way more than they probably should. And people just don't care about their stuff, they don't. In fact, the rental fleet doesn't even really care because heck, you are renting it from them. So what do they really care? They're gonna rent it regardless. I mean, heck, even the guy I got this thing from had a whole fleet of just absolutely crap RVs that he was renting and he's getting, you know, $1,000, $1,500 a week for these things. So, um, like I said, kind of take it with a grain of salt. Do a lot of questions, ask, uh, especially if you're renting, you know, if you're renting from a, from like a big company, that's probably the way to, to do it. Um, and then during your RV walkthrough, ask a lot of questions. Hey, why is the floor soft here? Hey, can you demonstrate this working? Hey, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this? Can you do that? Um, because let me tell you, when you're out and you're camping and you're all by yourself and something doesn't work and you find out it's because it's broken, it really sucks. Anyways, thank you very much for watching the video. Have a great day and ride hard.